Hey Church family, don't forget to download our mobile app, available for both Apple and Android. If you have an Apple device, simply type in Faith Christian CC in the App Store. If you have an Android device, just type Faith Christian Center Church in the Google Play Store. And remember this, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. Still locked down? No problem. With live streaming VidTivo, you can stream hundreds of hours of content all at the push of a button, including what's happening in our neighborhood and Tag Team Thursdays, with all new episodes uploaded every week. And don't forget, join us for service every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. excited and eagerly anticipating what God is about to do in our lives because we choose to pray. It is evident in the scripture that it is the nature of God to intervene when the people of God pray. When God's people pray, the power of God shows up to make a difference in our lives. There is an untapped power that we must release to meet the needs of the people so that God can demonstrate his power and ability and affect the lives of so many people that we pray for. I'm calling on each of us to be a part of the Wake, Pray, and Repeat prayer line each and every morning at 6 a.m. Now this will be a time of refreshing and a way to begin our day with a focus on our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are seeing the results in our personal and corporate lives as we choose to be committed to this effort. As we wait, pray, and repeat on a daily basis, we can expect God's supernatural intervention in Earth's affairs. So get ready to start your day with spending time with God by calling 712-775-7031, access code 298-581-777. I'm expecting exponential possibilities when we wait, pray, and repeat together. Now remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. And that's why God told me to teach you the word of God. Amen. See, because one influential person can, can have an interpretation about the word of God. And then his interpretation becomes acceptable and practiced by others. And then that uh, interpretation becomes popular and promoted to the masses. But then after a while, it becomes acceptable. So I got to get the people from just having a tradition to saying what the word of God says. Amen. Now go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Hallelujah. Now, now, now I found over the years, uh, Charlene, that, that because people don't know, it allowed the enemy to lie to, to us about Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Because he wanted his own purposes done in the earth. So if I can get you not to look at the word of God, look at, get you not to study on your own and, and just wait for the preacher to get up and preach on Sunday morning, give you one scripture, then, then make you shout, jump and dance, then he good. Thanks for watching Faith Television Network. For more original content, interviews and sermons, please be sure to subscribe to our channel right here on Livestream. Hello, I'm Carlton Sharp, pastor of Faith Christian Center Church right here in Beaumont, Texas. And I want to thank you for tuning in to this live broadcast. You make our services so special each time you join us. And we hope that today's message will minister to your hearts and to your souls. Our desire is that you enjoy the worship experience, the fellowship of the ministry of the word that will feed your faith and grow your spirit. So without further ado, get your Bible, notepad, and pen, and let's tune in to this live broadcast that is already in progress. Now remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives.
this morning. Amen. How many of you know he's a way maker? No matter what the situation is, he's going to make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. We just bless God for always making a way, no matter what. Even when it looks like you don't even know what's going on, God's going to make a way for you. He's going to open that door for you, and you just go ahead and step on in. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that's just who he is. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who
And Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for your healing power. God, I stand in agreement with her right now, Father, that she is healed and made whole, Father. And since there's no distance with you, God, we're here and she's there, but God, you're everywhere. And Father, you promised never to leave us nor forsake us. So God, in the name of Jesus, we stand on your word this morning, Father. When you declare that by your stripes we are healed, you said, Father, you sent your word to heal us and to deliver us from our destruction. And so God, I thank you even right now that she is healed, delivered, and set free now in the name of Jesus. And that her body functions like you designed it to function in the name of Jesus. Then Father, I pray for Miss Diane I pray for the Cantu and Duraso family, Father. As I have prayed this morning, God, you give them the peace that they need, Father. You are the God of all comfort, and you comfort us in our time of trouble. And so, Father, we thank you right now that they have your peace, God, the peace that surpasses all understanding. And so in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, amen. Well, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. The Bible says we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. First of all, let me thank all of you for praying for us, the family. Amen. As you know, Lady Gwen's younger brother passed away on yesterday morning. Uh, we, we got the call about, I think it was about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning and, uh, with the tragic news. And so uh, we want to continue to pray for Lady Gwen and the family, Miss Diane, all the brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, sons and daughters. Amen. Just keep them lifted up in your prayer. Uh, at this time, I'll, you know, we all have to go through this at some point in our lives. Someone we love, someone we care for, uh, transitions to be with the Lord. And it is because we are saved that we don't fall apart like others, like those who have no hope. We know we have hope because we know where our hope comes from. And so uh, just continue to lift the family up in prayer as we deal with the uh deal with all of the things that goes into uh into you know the transition of your loved one now right before i walked in i uh i got news that sister sharon uh grogan smith had a a, a slight health challenge uh, the other day uh, she was in the hospital and uh, she'll be getting out today but we want to pray for her continue to pray for her uh, for her healing amen uh, we, we, we know that God is our healer, that by his stripes we are healed. And so we just stand on the word of God because the word of God is true in our lives. You know, either we're going to stand on God's word for all of the situations that we face or we're not. Amen. And I just believe that, look, God's word, there's enough power in whatever God says to make whatever God says come to pass in our lives. And so, uh, and so we want to continue to pray for her. Uh, today would have been Sister Porter's and Brother Porter's 67th year anniversary. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I miss my buddy. Amen. Woo, Jesus. Yeah, Lord Jesus. I miss my buddy. Hallelujah. And then today, uh, uh, also, today is uh, Trelanda's uh, uh, birthday. She just became legal today. Praise the Lord. Amen, Brother Derek. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, happy birthday, Trelanda. Amen. Uh, on, uh, on Wednesday, Lady Gwen celebrates her birthday, amen? So we're going to be, you know, in the midst of all of this, we're still going to celebrate uh, what God is doing in her life, amen? Praise the Lord. Now, now listen to me now. Uh, this, there's, a, there's a new uh, Delta variant of this COVID-19 that's out right now. Uh, we want you to be safe, amen? Be safe. Uh, wear your mask, you, you know, wash your hands, social distance, do all the things that are necessary in order for you to stay and remain safe. Now, we know God is our healer. 
but God gives us good sense, amen, to, to follow the CDC guidelines in order to, uh, to keep ourselves safe. Uh, now, uh, uh, if you haven't gotten your vaccinations, get your vaccinations, amen. God uses medical science. He used men in the earth in order to get things done. Amen. Lady Gwen and I both have been vaccinated with both of our shots. Uh, we had the Moderna shot. And, uh, and I, I encourage you that if you haven't gotten your shot yet, get your shots. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, at this time, we're going to run some uh, uh, video spot concerning our children's ministry. And then I'll be right back right after this. Greetings. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Minister LaCharles Bradley. And I'm Minister Rose Bradley. You pastors here at Faith Christian Center Church. We would like to thank each of the parents and guardians for their partnership with us as we minister to the kids throughout this last year and a half. We have some exciting news. Children's ministry will kick back off Sunday, September 12th. As we prepare to restart our face-to-face -face ministry, we wanted to share the safety protocols that will be in place for our children and staff. We will continue to practice social distancing as advised by the CDC and other health officials. We will also require face masks to be worn by both the children and teachers for their safety. We will perform temperature checks as they check in for class at the kid check desk, as well as monitor the vaccine status of all of our staff to ensure we are using wisdom and our exposure to one another. Now you may be asking, what can I do to help? Well, I'm glad you asked. We are in need of volunteers in every area of the ministry. We are asking for teachers, aid, kid check desk workers, and all volunteers to help us with every area of this ministry to join us in preparing a future generation of kingdom leaders. You can fill out a volunteer form on the new church app, or you can come see us at the kid check desk as we prepare to let the kids up to their class in the mornings. We're looking forward to a blessed partnership with you and all of our children on this year. We want to thank you in advance for your prayers, your help, and your hands as we train up our children in the ways of the Lord. Remember, Remember this, we're, we're building, building faith, we're, we're building, building bridges, bridges, and we are building lives. In Romans chapter 12, verse 3, the Bible reminds us that God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, uh, we're going to be kicking off children's ministry on the third Sunday of next month. And so, uh, uh, again, we want to make sure that our kids are safe. Uh, and so we'll still have the guidelines in place uh, as we uh, begin the kickoff of our children's ministry. Amen. And so uh, we thank God for the Bradleys and uh, all that they do in order to advance God's kingdom through our children. Amen. The Bible says train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. And so we uh, we thank God for them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, I think that is all that I need to say before I get into the word today. Uh, are you ready for the word? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, how do thank you, God, for this time of fellowship with people of like precious faith. Father, we thank you that your word flows freely in this place, unhindered and unchecked by any force. Father, we thank you that your word is not void of power and that you confirm your word with signs following. Father, we thank you that Jesus Christ is our high priest and that he ever liveth to make intercessions for us. Now, Father, I thank you that my body is strong, my mind is alert, and my lips are anointed, and that I will clearly articulate the words such that every spiritual need is met. Now, Father, I covenant in advance to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the adorations for what shall be revealed this day. And all who agree with that prayer, I said, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. John chapter 14. Oh, let me, let me do this before I, before I do that. Uh, uh, welcome all of those who are watching today. Praise the Lord. Amen. You make our services so very special. Amen. At any time throughout the broadcast, if you need prayer, there's several ways you can get your prayer request to us. If you're watching by way of live stream, there's a box right there on your screen. It's, it's coming up on the screen. Amen. Put in your prayer request. Send it to us. If you're watching by way of Facebook Live, you can message us your prayer request. If you want to email it to us, you can send it to prayerministry at FCCC-BMT.org. Or if you are technology savvy, pull out your cell phone and text PR to 54244. And if you're on our new mobile app, there's a neat prayer tile on the mobile app. Just simply uh, click that link, follow the simple instructions. You can, so you, uh, you, can, you can put in your prayer request that way. Then uh, let me invite you to join us each and every morning for our wake, pray, and re repeat prayer line by calling the number at the bottom of the screen, 
775-7031, access code 298-581-777. And then finally, if you have a loved one who cannot access any of our social media platforms, they can call the toll-free number 877-781-2818. Again, that number is 877-781-2818. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. All right, now are you ready for the word? Turn your Bibles to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Let's hold up our Bibles and make our confession of faith. Hold them up nice and high and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a doer and not just a hearer. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never ever be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. John chapter 14, let's begin at verse number 16. John chapter 14, beginning at verse 16, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be what? in you. And this, read that out of verse number 14 out of the Amplified. It says, uh, oh yeah, praise the Lord. Let me, let me get to the Amplified version real quick. Amen. Look what it says here. It says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby that he may remain with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take to its heart, because it does not see him or recognize him. Uh, but you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. Amen. We're talking from the subject matter of the helper. Somebody say the helper. Amen. I believe that it's, it's, it's God's plan for our lives, for all of us to have the helper living on the inside of us. Amen. Now, go to Galatians chapter 3. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is activated by faith. Amen. All the promises of God are received by faith, even the promise of Holy Spirit. And so, so today, uh, I'm going to conclude this lesson with the invitation to be filled with Holy Spirit. Now, because we are socially distancing uh, and, and following the guidelines of CDC, normally I would lay my hands on you, amen, in order that you might receive Holy Spirit. But today, uh, we're going to receive Holy Spirit by faith. And I believe that regardless of whether I lay my hands on you or not, you have the ability, you have the faith right now to receive Holy Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. Because I remember uh, when I was, uh, I was in the church service and, and I, I went up to get filled with the Holy Spirit, but nothing happened that night. And so, so I, I left that service frustrated because after all, Everybody else that was there, they received. And so, so when I got home, Sister Gladia, I, began, I went to my study the days after that, and uh, I began to look at the word and go over the scripture again and again and again so I could get it down on the inside of me. And, uh, and then God told me, he said, just like you receive salvation by faith, you have to receive being filled with the Holy Spirit by faith. And you don't necessarily need anyone to lay their hands on you. You could do it right now. And at my desk with nobody there, I began to, I received Holy Spirit with the most common evidence of speaking in other tongues. I began that day with nobody touching me, nobody laying their hands on me, nobody even in the room. I received Holy Spirit, amen. And I believe just like that, you'll be able to receive today, amen, because of your faith. You in Galatians chapter 3? Look at verse number 13, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Look what he says. <clears throat> he says, Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the, on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, how? Through faith, amen? And so, so that's, that's what I'm believing God for today, that after I conclude this message and make the invitation to be filled with Holy Spirit, that by faith you're going to receive Holy Spirit. And watch this now. Even though faith is, 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 
Every promise is received by faith. It is released out of our mouth. Faith is released out of our mouth. And so you will be able to speak, amen. Speak what you believe, glory to God, amen. Now, when the power of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is valued, that will be a ready response, amen, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Go to Luke chapter number 11, Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter number 11, amen. Now, God will not force you to receive Holy Spirit today. We have to ask him for it, amen. Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter number 11, and verse number 10. Luke chapter 11, verse number 10. It says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So today, we're going to ask God to fill you with Holy Spirit. Amen? We're going to open our mouths and ask God to fill you with Holy Spirit. Now, it is also important to know the critical steps. Amen? that we must take. And that's why I'm going to go through step by step by step on how to receive Holy Spirit today so that when the invitation is made, you will be ready to receive. Now, now, of course, you, you need a revelation. Amen. I believe over the past six weeks, I've been giving you the word of God to give you a revelation that it is, it is the will of God for every born again believer to be filled with his spirit. Then you need a role model. You need somebody that, that demonstrates that this thing works. Amen. How many, how many of you are already filled with Holy Spirit? Let me, let me, all right, look, just look around the house. You'll see that people are already filled with Holy Spirit. Amen. Then, then there is a regiment of faith. How to do it. Amen. That's, that's, that's my assignment is to teach how you do it. And then you got to have a righteous resolve that once, once, I, once this invitation is made, that, that I'm going to walk in this thing on a daily basis. Now go to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Now, of course, there are several responses that you can have today when the invitation is made. The first response is that of a reserve response, reserve response. In other words, you're like, uh, I'll put it off until another day. I'll put it off until another time. That's not for me today. Amen. You can have this reserve response like this father over in Mark chapter 9. Look at verse number 23, Mark chapter 9, verse number 23. It says, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. It's more than just believing. It's about putting your actions in motion, amen? Putting your faith on the line. So, so you can sit back today and say, I, I'm reserved. I, I, I don't want to do it in front of everybody. I, I, you know, I want to do it in the privacy of my own home. Okay, that's fine. Amen. Or you could have a rejected response. Somebody say rejected response. Jesus offered the young rich ruler an opportunity, amen, to be a part of his staff. But because he had some stuff and, and Jesus had asked him, go sell what you have and give it to the poor, he rejected the opportunity to be a part of Jesus' staff. Amen. And so, so many people, even today, they reject the promise of Holy Spirit because I don't want to be like everybody else. Amen. I see all those people acting emotional. And so therefore, look, I, I, I just don't want to do it. Then you can have a resentful response. Amen. Like Naaman. Uh, Naaman goes to the prophet to get healed and uh, the prophet don't even come out to see him. He tells the servant, go tell him to go dip in the dirty Jordan seven times and then he'll be made whole. Amen. Now, now he resented that. He got upset, Regina. He got upset at the man of God. What, 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 shouldn't he come out and, and give me, tell me something, lay his hands on me, do something? He said, and he want me to dip in this dirty joint. I got cleaner water back where I came from. He resented the fact that the man of God told him, go, dump, go, go dip yourself seven times in the Jordan. Now, thank God that Naaman had a servant that said, Master, if he would have told you to do something great, wouldn't you have done it? Amen. And look, it, it wouldn't have happened if he just dipped six times. He had to obey God and dip all seven. And once he dipped seven times, he came up whole. Amen. Free of that plague. Amen. And so don't be resentful today. That's all I'm trying to tell you. But you got to have a ready, readiness response like Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus hears that Jesus was coming to town. Watch this now. And uh, he began to cry out. 
to Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And everybody around Bartimaeus told Bartimaeus, be quiet, shut up, you're too loud, amen. But Bartimaeus said, look, can I tell y'all something? Y'all can see, I can't. I need this man that's called the healer to come lay his hands on me, amen. And the Bible says because he had this faith, this readiness faith, amen, he was ready to receive whatever God had for him. And Jesus asked him, what is it that you want? He said, I want to see. I want to be made whole again. And Jesus says, according to your faith, be it unto you. And that's what I'm telling you today. If you have a readiness response that today, today is my day. Today is my day to be filled with Holy Spirit. And I'm not taking nothing less than, than being filled with Holy Spirit with the most common evidence of speaking in other tongues. Amen. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 now. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We said on last week that when we get filled with the Holy Spirit, we have access to spiritual power. Somebody say spiritual power. There's just something about being filled with the Holy Spirit that, that gives us access to this power, this wisdom that God has for us. Because Holy Spirit was there at the very beginning. Amen. And so now that, that, that we get filled with the Holy Spirit, we get to, to get this revelation of God's word. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9, look what he says. But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us to God, of God, which things also we speak, not in the world's uh, words of which man's wisdom teach it, but which the Holy Ghost teach it, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, verse 14, receiving not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. I get access. I get access to all the things of God, amen? The wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, amen? Not only that, but when I get filled with Holy Spirit, I become more sensitive. I believe today that after you receive Holy Spirit in your life, that you're going to be so sensitive to Holy Spirit that, I mean, look, it's going to be like you hearing a dog whistle. Nobody else can hear it. But you'll be able to hear, whoop, you'll hear, be able to hear that tweet from God. That, I know that's God, amen? Praise the Lord. Not only that, but you, you also, watch this now, become a vessel for God to use when it comes down to giving out the spiritual gifts because your heart will be prepared to receive. Amen. And then watch this now. You'll have a greater appreciation for what God is doing in the lives of others when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, let's, let's talk about these steps that must be taken in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Go to John chapter 3. In verse number three, John chapter three, the first thing in order to receive Holy Spirit is that you got to be saved. Amen. You got to be saved. For those of you who are watching today by way of all of our social media pages, listen, it's so simple to get saved. We're going to get you saved like, like that. You don't have to run around the church. You can get saved right there in your car if you're listening, right there on your job if you're watching, amen, in your home while you're cooking, amen. Wherever you are, you can get saved. John chapter three. Look at verse number three, John chapter three and verse number three. Look what he says. He says, Jesus said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so God has made this thing so very simple. Go to Romans chapter 10. I didn't put that up there. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter number 10. We're going to read verse nine and verse number 10. Romans chapter 10, verse number nine and verse number 10. Are you ready? Look what he says. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So here's how easy it is to get saved. He says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. It doesn't say you have to belong to a certain denomination. It doesn't say that you have to run around the church. It doesn't say that you have to shout at the top of your lungs. All it says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I shall be saved. He said, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I know without Jesus, I'm lost. I believe your word that says you sent Jesus to die on the cross and he rose again from the dead just for me. Father, I receive that now in the name of Jesus. Father, fill me with your spirit and your power so that I might live a life pleasing in your sight. Thank you, Father, for saving me and making me a part of your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody give God a big hand of praise, amen. Now, if you said, if you made that confession from a sincere heart, I believe that you're a part of the family of God. Amen. It's just that simple. I, I, I think we, we make it so difficult uh, for people to get saved. Amen. And it's just that simple that if I would confess with my mouth, believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says I shall be saved. Amen. So that's the first step. The first step is getting saved. Glory to God. Okay. Step number two. Go to Joel. Joel chapter two. Joel, Joel chapter two. The second step in getting filled with the Holy Spirit is knowing that the Holy Spirit is meant for every believer somebody say every believer not just the sanctified folk not just the folk that wear white or whatever color they want to wear this is the, the the holy spirit is for each and every one of us amen joel chapter number two amen i think over the years that we have been uh conditioned by tradition to only believe that it's just the sanctified folk that get filled with the holy spirit but we have to know, regardless of the nominational tag, that Holy Spirit is meant for every believer. Amen. Joel chapter number 2. Look at verse number 28. Joel chapter 2, verse number 28. Are you ready? Look what it says. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon how much flesh? Upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. God said it's for everybody. There is it's not just for certain folk. Amen. It's not just for the rich and powerful. No. It's not for just those on this side of the track or th that side of the track. It's for everybody, amen? Go to Acts chapter number 2, Acts chapter 2. So that you say, well, Pastor, that was Old Testament. Okay, well, let's look at New Testament and see what he says. Acts chapter 2, look at verse number 17. I got to convince you that, that this is the will of God for every one of us to be filled with Holy Spirit. Not just some of us, but every one of us, Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse number 17, he quotes the prophet Joel. It says, verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on, on, and on my, maids, my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So, so here he is telling the New Testament church, that this is his plan for our lives. That every one of you, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you. And, and in those days, and we in the, we're in the days right now. Jump down to verse number 38. Acts chapter 2, verse number 38. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look what he says. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you, not every other one of you, but every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off as even as many as the Lord our God shall call so so here Peter says listen once you get to a place of repentance amen and and and, and watch this now you have the ability to receive the gift of Holy Spirit he, he says now the promise is to you who I'm speaking to Clint I'm talking to y'all right now so it's for you and for your children then he says for everybody that's afar off, amen, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, we have to ask the question, is God still calling people? Amen. Is he still, is he still uh, 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 pulling on people's heart to be saved? Amen. So, so he's talking to us right now. 
So just so that you understand that it's not just for the people of old in, in the Old Testament or even in the New Testament. It's for us today. Yes, it's for us right now to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you got to know, that's the second thing, that Holy Spirit is meant for each and every one of us. Not just because I'm a pastor. Amen. Not because Sister Pauline is a minister. Amen. No, he is meant for each and every one of us. You born again, you should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Number next. So the first thing was what? Get saved. Number two was what? Know that Holy Spirit is meant for each and every one of us. Amen. And number three, know that Holy Spirit is freely given by grace to every believer who desires it. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't have to pay for this. Amen. We don't have to receive an offering for this. Being filled with Holy Spirit. It is a free gift, just like salvation is free. Amen. The gift of Holy Spirit is free to all those who ask. Amen. Go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. And verse number 38. John chapter 7. Verse number 38. Are you ready? Look what he says. He says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. But this he spake, uh, this spake he of the spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Amen. So it is a free gift. Jesus says, I'm giving it to you. You should receive it. Amen. And he put should receive it because everybody don't receive it. Hallelujah. And I, I, look, I want you to experience all that God has for you in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so it is a free gift. Somebody say it's free. Amen. By grace. It's free by grace for every one of us that believe. Amen. Number next. Okay. I got I to gotta inform you on what to expect because people get all kind of ideas on what's going to happen when I get filled with the Holy Spirit. Am I going to fall on the floor? Am I going to roll on the floor? Am I going to foam at the mouth? What's going to happen to, you, to me, Pastor? So I got I to gotta explain to you that, that what, what's going to transpire when you receive the Holy Spirit by faith. Amen. First of all, I, I want you to understand that Holy Spirit is not going to speak for you. Okay, go to Acts chapter 2. I showed you this on last week, but I need to show you again today that you need to understand that you will do the speaking, not Holy Spirit. He's going to give you the utterance. And on last week, I, I, I shared with you, I gave you an example of Andrew, and uh, uh, he had to go to, to, to uh, Florida to bring his fiance's stuff back so he could get married to her. So, so that's where he's at today. But, but, but watch this now. I said on last week, it's like a musician hearing notes in their head before they strum the instruments. Amen. You'll be able to hear what Holy Spirit is saying, but you got to release it out of your mouth. Okay. That's your responsibility. So you got to understand, I'm not going to do, do jumping jacks, spiritual jumping jacks when I get filled with the Holy Spirit. That's not what's going to happen. I'm not going to run around the building. That is not what's going to happen. But I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to speak what I hear the Spirit of God telling me. Acts chapter 2, look at verse number 4. Acts chapter 2, verse number 4, look what he says. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. You see that? Okay, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Verse number 44. Acts chapter 10, verse number 44. Look what it says. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard, which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter said, Answer, answer Peter, can any forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? So, so watch this now. So they spoke with tongues. 
Amen. They spoke. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Look at verse number 6. Amen. Acts chapter 19, verse number 6. Are you there? Look what it says. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So again, they spake with tongues. Amen. At, when, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So you got to understand that today, when you receive Holy Spirit by faith, amen, it is not Holy Spirit that will be speaking. He will give you the utterance. You will hear it in your, in your spirit, man, and you begin to speak what you hear. Now, of course, let me, I, I, I'm just going to tell you, it, it may sound uh, uh, kind of strange to your, to your ear, your natural ear. But you got to know that this pleases God. Amen. He said, look, you might not understand it, but the Bible says that God understands it. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, okay, I got to show you 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Hallelujah. Because I, I know what the devil will try to do. He will try to trick you into believing that what you're saying is nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. Amen. But you got to know that when you're praying in the Holy Spirit, in tongues, watch this now, that God understands what you're saying. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Look at verse number 2. 1 Corinthians 14, verse number 2. Look what he says. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries amen so he says when i when i speak in an unknown tongue nobody understands it so so even you are included in that amen he says men do not understand it but god understands it and you got to you got to receive by faith that what you say out of your mouth brother pew god understands it amen regardless of whether i understand it or not god understands it Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Now then, then the question, then the next step is, you have to understand, uh, don't get into fear. Amen. Believing that you're going to receive a counterfeit. <laughs> amen. See, the devil, the devil, the devil is, is a trickster. Amen. And he will try to put you into fear of, of, of receiving Holy Spirit. Watch this now. And make you believe that what you're doing is not biblical. That is some kind of counterfeit. But we're not going to get into fear. Because the Bible says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of what? Love, power, and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Now, let me deal with this while I'm here. Go to Mark chapter number 8. Mark chapter 8. Another thing that the devil will try to do is bring shame upon you in receiving Holy Spirit. See, he, he, wants to, he wants to cause you to, uh, to be ashamed of the fact that you're filled with Holy Spirit, amen, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, and he'll try to point other people out who are not like you. Amen. But well, watch this now, Mark chapter number 8. Mark chapter 8 and verse number 38. Mark chapter 8, verse number 38. Are you there? Look what he says. Whosoever there sh there sh therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the, in, in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Amen. So God says, if you are ashamed to own me now, I'll be ashamed to own you then. Amen. If you're ashamed to receive by faith the gift of Holy Spirit because people, are, people around you may be watching, he say, look, I'm going to be ashamed of you. And I'm telling you what, what's going to happen is the devil going to try to make you ashamed. Amen? So that you won't receive Holy Spirit, you know, knowing that you need this power. You need this helper in your life. Amen? 
because now you'll be able to commune with the Father without any satanic interference. And that's why he wants to, he wants to cause you to be ashamed because he wants to listen in on your conversation. And when I'm praying in the Holy Spirit, he cannot decipher what I'm saying. Amen? Because I'm speaking spiritual things that he cannot interfere with. Amen. And, and I, when, when, before I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, man, I, look, I ran out of all of the English words I knew how to say to God. But there was this yearning on the inside of me that said, there is more that you need to say to your father. But I didn't understand it, Sister Shirley, because here I am, running away, being ashamed of Holy Spirit. That's why I was ashamed of, of being filled with the Holy Spirit, because I wanted to be cool. Amen. Praise the Lord. I wanted to be cool. I didn't want, look, I seen all them folk in church falling out, rolling on the floor, and they said, that's the Holy Ghost. I said, I don't want that. Ain't no way I'm going to mess up my suit. No, I told her, ain't no way, ain't no way. And then, and then you go to some churches, and, uh, They'll beat the drum, they get, the, get on the organ and beat the drum and make it, and, and then I couldn't dance like them. You know, I had this, I, the Spirit of God gave me this vision the other day that I was in a, uh, what they, a, 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 a quote, sanctified church. And I was teaching the Word of God. And one of the things that I told him, Sister Porter, is that even if you can't dance, like this person, that Holy Spirit was meant for you. Even if you can't shout like everybody else, Holy Spirit was meant for you. And there were some who got offended because I said you didn't have to dance or shout. But when I held up the word of God and I asked them to show me, show me in this word where that qualifies me to be filled with the Holy Spirit based upon whether I could do my feet real fast, whether I could shout at the top of my lungs, show me in the Word. Because if you show me, I know David danced. Amen? I know he danced. But him dancing does not qualify my salvation. Him, him dancing does not qualify my being filled with the Holy Spirit. None of that matters when it comes down to the things of God. He danced out of his experience with God. That God delivered him out of his situation and because of his excitement, he danced before God. It had nothing to do with your salvation. It had nothing to do with your being filled with the Holy Spirit. And in this vision that God gave me, many got offended in that denomination because they thought that I was talking against what they were doing. And it wasn't that I was talking against what they were doing, I was trying to give them a supplement of the word of God. So that in spite of what you're doing, you have a knowledge base. See, so that's right, Sister Paul, and when you know that you know that you know that, I look, look, I, I, when I know that it's meant for me to be filled with the Holy Spirit, when I know that it's a free gift, it changes everything. So here I am, I gotta understand, that I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm not going to be ashamed to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? I'm not going to be ashamed. Amen? That God will give me a counterfeit. No, no, I'm not going to be ashamed because I know that if I ask God for the Holy Spirit, he's going to give it to me. We already read John chapter 7. If, if, if a father, go, go back to John chapter 7. I got to show you. I got to show you. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Verse number 37. We're going to read down to verse 39. Look what it says. In the last day, verse 37, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Stop right there for a second. He says, If any man thirst, are, are you thirsty enough? Are you hungry enough for the things of God. Man, look, look, I spent all my life in church. 
My sister can attest that we were at church all day long. We went to Sunday school, the, the 10 o'clock service, the 3 o'clock service, the 6 o'clock service, amen, all day long on Sunday. But nothing, yeah, BTU and everything else. Every other you, amen. But watch this now. Even though I was in church all day long, did not mean that I hungered and thirst after the things of God. Even though I got saved, uh, what's the church on St. James? Uh, Pleasant Green. That's the place I got saved. Amen. I was at a, I was at a, uh, 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 it was a revival. My mother was going to this revival and I, I, I tagged along with her. And they had this saxophone player named Bernard Johnson. And Bernard Johnson gave his testimony about how uh, someone broke into his house and slit his throat and killed his family. And that night I, 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 I hit my mom. I said, Mama, can I go get saved? All because of his testimony. But now, even at a young age, I still did not hunger and thirst after God. Saved all my life, basically. But yet, without the knowledge of the word of God, because we were having good church, I missed all of this. That, that, that God wanted to give me Holy Spirit, but watch this now, I had to receive him. I had to receive him. Amen? Let's continue verse 38. Look what he says. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of what? Living water. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believed on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. I have to know that, that I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. I'm ready. And you got to be ready to receive, amen? Now watch this now. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Oh my God. You better get ready, get ready, get ready, because it's about to happen for you, amen? Yeah. Matthew chapter number 5. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 6. Look what he says. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If I'm hungering and thirsting after righteousness, if I'm hungering and thirsting after Holy Spirit, I shall be filled. Not a if, not a maybe, not a probably, but I shall be filled. And that day in my office, Sister Pew, when I cried out to God and said, God, I'm ready to receive. Nobody else in my office I don't even think nobody else was home at that time. But here I was, I told God, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive. And without hesitation or reservation, I begin to speak in other tongues. Amen? You gotta be ready. Amen? You gotta be ready. You know, that's why, that's why I thank her uh, on last week. She came up to me, she said, Pastor, I'm ready, I'm ready. I said, I say, let me teach this last lesson. Let me teach this last lesson. Because it's so important that you know, you got to know the steps. You got to know what God intends for you. And then once you, once you experience being filled with Holy Spirit, with the most common evidence of speaking in other tongues, you got to practice on a daily basis. It's not just a one day occurrence. Amen. It's not just about Sunday morning. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's not. This is, this is, this experience should be experienced on a daily basis. Every day, you ought to commune with your father. Every day, you ought to pray in tongues because you're praying the perfect will of God for your life. Amen? When you don't know what to do, pray in the Holy Spirit. And see, just like an athlete, we're, we're watching the Olympics right now. And those athletes trained their bodies to where they had muscle memory. Amen? Where it becomes so natural that they, their body just reacted because this is what we always do. 
Well, that's what has to happen when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. That it becomes muscle memory to you. Oh, today, I, I, I'm, I'm finna pray in the Holy Ghost. I would rather, personally, Clint, I would rather pray in the Holy Ghost than pray in English. I know I gotta pray in English because y'all need to hear what I, and understand what I'm saying. But, but I would rather, I would rather pray in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because I know I'm praying the perfect will of God. I'm praying things I haven't even seen. I'm praying things that what eyes have not seen nor ears have heard. I'm praying the things that God has pre already prepared for me. Amen. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta practice, practice on a daily basis. But watch this now. Watch this now. Don't let hindrances stop you today. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Some of you probably, some of you could be operating in unforgiveness. And it could block that today. Amen. You have unforgiveness in your heart. You got to get that out of your heart. No, you, you want to ask God for, for, for Holy Spirit? Clean out your heart. Give him a temple that he can reside in. Amen. Become this vessel for God to use you. And look, that unforgiveness, that jealousy, that envy, that hatred that you have in your heart, you got to get that out. Amen. You got to get it out. Mark chapter 11. Verse number 25. Mark chapter 11. Verse number 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. If there's anything that you're harboring in your heart right now that's going to prevent you from receiving Holy Spirit, Take care of it now. Take care of it now. Repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe with all my heart, based upon the scriptures, that the gift of the Holy Spirit is meant for me today. I come to you to receive the gift of Holy Spirit. I renounce any and all sin in my life I repent of any unforgiveness or hatred or bitterness I will not hold th these in my heart I renounce any involvement with unclean spirits and uh, and I will not participate in these ever again just as I have trusted you for my eternal salvation by faith. So now I trust you by faith to give me the fullness of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Jesus, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand to your feet real quick. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who are watching by way of all of our social media platforms, right there in your homes, wherever you are, amen, Holy Spirit is meant for you to, too today. Amen. And I believe that it is the will of God for you to receive Holy Spirit right now, and it must be by faith. All the promises of God are received by faith. And just as we are about to do here in the sanctuary, you could do this right where you are. Amen. You can receive Holy Spirit by faith. Now, we've already received the word of God that it is his will for us to be filled with Holy Spirit. Now, you have to use your faith for salvation is the same faith to be filled with Holy Spirit. And as I pray, it will be up to you to hear the utterance that Holy Spirit gives and speak that out of your mouth. Now, don't let the devil trick you and stop you from being filled with Holy Spirit. 
And I believe without me laying my hands on you, I believe that today you can be filled with Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. It's a matter of your faith. According to your faith, be it unto you. Now I'm going to pray. I'm going to extend my hands toward you. Ooh, that was powerful. Ooh, Jesus, I just felt that. Mm. I'm going to extend my hands toward you. And you will hear the utterance and you will begin to speak as the Spirit of God gives it to you in the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who are already filled with Holy Spirit, I want you to pray in your language. Amen. Hallelujah. So that we make the devil mad for all of us who are filled with Holy Spirit. Father, now I thank you. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I'm praying right now for your people to receive Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Father, I believe right now that they would have the evidence that they are filled with Holy Spirit, the most common evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit that is of speaking with other tongues. Now, Father, just because we have this social distancing does not mean that there's distance in the spirit realm. So, Father, as I stretch forth my hand, I believe it is as if I am touching them and they are receiving Holy Spirit now in the name of Jesus. Now, out of their mouth, that they will begin to speak as the Spirit of God gives them the utterance. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. In the name of Jesus, that they will not be ashamed, God. That they will let it flow out of them like rivers of living water. In the name of Jesus, God. To you be glorified today, Father. Glorified today, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let it flow out of them right now, Father, as rivers of living water, Father. In the name of Jesus, God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, that just as salvation was received by faith, God, right now that they receive the Holy Spirit by faith, Father. In the name of Jesus, it's according to their faith, be it unto them, Father. And Father, your word declares that there's enough power in what you said to, to make whatever you said come to pass in our lives. And Father, you said that it's your desire that every born-again believer be filled with your spirit, God. So I'm declaring right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they are filled right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, wherever they are, Father, in the sanctuary or online, Father, that they are filled now in the name of Jesus, that they are speaking now, Father, in the name of Jesus. They are speaking heavenly languages, Father. Hallelujah, Father, that you understand, God. They are speaking spiritual mysteries, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, according to your word, Father, I thank you. And I bind the enemy, God. I bind the devil that's trying to keep them and prevent them from receiving your spirit today, Father. In the name of Jesus, I loose the Holy Spirit, God, in the name of Jesus, to do his perfect work in this earth, God. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father. Thank you, Father. Be glorified, Father, with our tongues today, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. And everybody shout, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> yes, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Father. You're worthy to be praised, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You, you must practice on a daily basis. Amen. So that you can be proficient in your prayer language. Amen. It doesn't matter how it sounded today. Listen, just continue to do it by faith. Every day, Father, I'm doing this by faith. By faith, God. 
by faith, Father. I'm doing it the next day. I'm doing it by faith the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And, I'm, I, and, and, and you begin to see what God will do in your life because of your prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I got to stop because I am out of time. Somebody give God a big hand of praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, guess what? You may be seated this offering time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's offering time. It's our time to, to give back to God what he has blessed us with. This is, this is God's way of expanding his kingdom in the earth through our giving. You know, one of the things that God told me 21 years ago is that not to... Uh, not to sell chicken dinners, not to wash cars, not to do anything like that, but just depend on God to speak to the hearts of people to obey him in their giving. Amen? Giving their tithes, their offerings, and their gifts of love. Now, it is God who made the promise that if we would give, that it's going to be given back to us. And if we can believe God for our salvation and for heaven, that which we cannot see, why can't we trust God with our substance, which we can see? See, we, we expect for us to go to heaven when, when we should transition to be with the Lord. But we have never seen that. Well, I'm telling you that God has made another promise to us, that if we would become givers, that something supernatural will happen in our lives. Amen. But we got to trust him. You know, we say we trust God. Man, but I tell you that, that when it comes down to people's finances, they're like, God, I, I don't know if I can do that. Well, if you could trust him for heaven, certainly you could trust him to take care of you financially. Amen. And I have seen in, in, in many of your lives, I, I've heard your testimonies. I've heard your testimonies from, from, uh, 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 from debt to success. Amen? I've heard your, your testimonies about repossession to ha having more than enough. Amen? Because you trusted the plan of God. And every time I would tell you, just trust God in this area. Just trust God and you'll see God work for you. And man, I could, I could just call people up right now and say, give your testimony. I know what God, see, see, it's easy for you to say, pastor, that's just you. It's just you, pastor, because you're the pastor. No, this does not work. None of the principles work just because I am a pastor. They work because I work the plan. I work the process. I, 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 I do what God says. And boy, I get excited, Sister Shirley, when it comes down to giving. Because I know that the return is, is on its way. Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, look, look, look. Right now, right now, God has me on this aggressive plan to prove him in 100 days. I say, God, I'm going to prove you. Amen. He said, but watch this now. You put your seed in the ground and you prove me. You prove me. And see if I won't do what I said I'd do. See if I won't open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive it. Prove me. Put me to the test. Put me to the test that I won't give you wisdom and insight into financial matters. Prove me and put me to the test that if I wouldn't raise up somebody somewhere to use their power, their ability, and their influence. Prove me, God says. Amen. Amen. I've put him to the test. For the last 30 years, I put God to the test. 1991, God, I'm going to stand on your word. And I'm going to prove that your word works. Amen? 
Amen. I, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything you tell me. I'm going to be sensitive to your spirit. I'm going to give when you tell me to give. I'm going to give how much you tell me to give, God. And I'm going to prove you. I'm going to prove this system works. And I'm going to tell everybody from the top of my life, I don't care if they don't like it, I'm going to tell it. Amen? That it works. So you say, well, Pastor, how can I give today? How can I, how can I sow into the kingdom of God? How can I give my tithes, my offerings, and my gift of love? There are several ways uh, that you can give today. Uh, if you're watching my web live stream, there is a donate box right there on the top of your screen. All you got to do is click that button, follow the simple instructions, and you can sow your seed today. If you're watching my web Facebook live, you can, uh, you can, uh, there's a couple of links in the comment section. All you have to do is just click one of those links in the comment section, sow your seed that way. If you want to, if your technology is savvy, pull out your cell phone and text FCCC give, giving, FCC giving, it's right there on your screen to 54244. Or if you want to send it to us by way of mail, you can send it to Faith Christian Center Church, 6490 Phelan Boulevard, Beaumont, Texas, 77706. If you want to drop by in person, you can drop by on, on Mondays and Thursdays between the hours of 10 and 12 o'clock. And our church administrator, Brother Dan Oliphant, will be here to receive it. And then if you're really technology savvy, I got a QR code. If you just scan this QR code, uh, it'll take you right directly to the portal. And, uh, and you can give that way. It's the simplest, easiest, and safest way to sow your seed today, your tithes, your offerings, and your gifts of love. Amen. And then finally, you say, well, Pastor, I want to sow into your life. How can I do that? And this, hold up a second. Let me, let me just say this. Don't, don't take it lightly uh, that, that God, uh, that I, 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 God have me to say, sowing into your man of God. Because there is a promise that God has made when we do sow into the man of God. And, and look, I'm not saying it just because I am a man of God. I'm saying this because I practice this principle myself. That I sow into my man and woman of God because I know that there is a grace that's on their lives that I want on my life. And amen, praise the Lord. And, and so, so people be like, well, pastor, you don't look like you need anything. Well, I'm, I'm dependent on God. Amen, I'm never going to look like I have a need. Never. I'm telling y'all, I'm never going to look like I have a need. But that does not discount the principle that God placed in his word. See, God put this in his word, that we who are taught the word ought to take care of the one that's teaching us the word. And look, 30, 21 years ago when we started Faith Christian Center Church, I walked away from, from ExxonMobil, right? Because God told me to. And God told me, allow me to be your source. And I will raise up people to sow into your life. Amen to give to you because that's my plan, to bless their lives. And I have to tell pastors all the time, you are make. I told a pastor this two weeks ago. I told him, I said, the Bible says that you are making your church an inferior church because you're not letting them sow into your life. They were inferior and Paul had to apologize to the Corinthian church. He said, I made you an inferior church because I didn't give you an opportunity to sow into my life. He said, forgive me of this wrong. Forgive me. He had to ask the, Philipp, the Corinthian church for forgiveness because he didn't allow them to sow into his life. But then he looked at the Philippian church. He said, man, I thank my God always of you. Amen. He said, I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm trying to get something to you. He said, the gifts that you're sowing into my life, look, God's going to be the one to return it to you. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. So don't, don't, listen, listen, we, we do not have the one Sunday a month, one Sunday a year that we sit in a wingback chair and, and then y'all express your love to us. No, that's not what God told me to do. I got to obey God and God said, give them an opportunity to participate in my plan, to bless their lives. Now you're going to get blessed too, but I'm, look, this blessing is going to be for them because they have taken care of the man of God. Amen. So now I'm putting it back on the screen. So here's how you say, well, Pastor, how can we sow into your life? Amen. You can sow in our lives by way of our, our cash app. Amen. Or if you're in person, there's a, a box that you could check that you could sow your seed that way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's make our faith confession for our, for our giving today. <clears throat> Repeat after me, Father, I thank you that you have a financial plan for the believer called tithes and offerings. At this moment, I set my heart to tap into your financial plan for me. Satan will not rob me anymore of my finances. 
in the name of Jesus, by faith, I am at this moment planting my financial seed into the kingdom of God's field. I am doing this because I know that this is a biblical truth and I set my heart to obey the word. Father, I also know that it is a biblical truth that in return for my financial faithfulness, you are supplying all my needs and above my needs because I've tapped into your financial plan. I believe that you're raising up somebody somewhere to use their power, their ability, and their influence to help me. In Jesus' name, I hold fast to my confession and your financial plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you once again, Father, for your word today. Father, I thank you that today your word has fallen upon good ground and that everyone has received the gift of Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Father, I thank you now in the name of Jesus that as we give today, we give according to the plan for our lives, God. Father, you, you have declared that we should give our tithes, our offerings, and our gifts of love. So, Father, for every tithe in the house, God, I declare the windows of heaven blessing upon their lives. I believe that you give them wisdom and insight into financial matters as a result of their giving. Then, Father, those who, who give toward the pastor's compensation fund, Gwen and I agree with them right now that they receive a first-class return on their giving. We truly believe that they live in the best, they wear the best, they drive the best, they eat the best, they go first class in life. They live out of your checking account versus their own checking account. Father, I thank you that those who give toward the television ministry and the building fund, Father, the word declares that when we, when we give for the support of the ministry, that you shall return unto us the maximum return. And we believe by faith, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, that men shall give unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will you cause men to give unto our bosom. Then, Father, those who, who choose to eliminate kingdom debt, we thank you, Father, that you eliminate their personal debt, that they live a debt-free life, willing to obey you in everything that they do. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Our brothers, come now and receive our offering. Those of you who are watching by way of live, uh, live stream, Roku, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Amazon TV, Apple TV, Google TV, all the platforms, thank you for joining us today. We pray that as you sow your seed, we pray that you've been blessed by the word of God today. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now remember this, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we're building lives. And Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. We'll see you next time on our broadcast. Amen. Somebody give God a big hand of praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, church family. Don't forget to download our mobile app, available for both Apple and Android. If you have an Apple device, simply type in Faith Christian CC in the App Store. If you have an Android device, just type Faith Christian Center Church in the Google Play Store. And remember this, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. I'm excited and eagerly anticipating what God is about to do in our lives because we choose to pray. It is evident in the scripture that it is the nature of God to intervene when the people of God pray. When God's people pray, the power of God shows up to make a difference in our lives. There is an untapped power that we must release to meet the needs of the people so that God can demonstrate his power and ability and affect the lives of so many people that we pray for. I'm calling on each of us to be a part of the Wake, Pray, and Repeat prayer line each and every morning at 6 a.m. Now this will be a time of refreshing and a way to begin our day with a focus on our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are seeing the results in our personal and corporate lives as we choose to be committed to this effort. As we wait, pray, and repeat on a daily basis, we can expect God's supernatural intervention in Earth's affairs. So get ready to start your day with spending time with God by calling 712-775-7031, access code 298-581-777. I'm expecting exponential possibilities when we wait, pray, and repeat together. Now remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. Hello, I'm Carlton Sharp, pastor of Faith Christian Center Church. One of the most common misconceptions about breast cancer is that it only affects women. As a lifelong advocate for health and wellness, I'm here to inform you right now that this could not be further from the truth. Every year there are 2,650 new cases of breast cancer found in men with a death rate of around 530. This is one of the biggest reasons I stand so firm in my fight to raise awareness for breast cancer. Whether male or female, it's a cause that we all run the risk of facing. 
It is my honor to be a Southeast Texas Real Man Wear Pink Ambassador, raising money for breast cancer awareness, detection, and treatment. I am asking for 100 of my family, friends, and partners to donate $50 to the American Cancer Society. Every dollar raised helps the American Cancer Society save lives from breast cancer through early detection and prevention, innovative breast cancer research, and patient support. Because of supporters like you, we're able to make a huge impact on the mission to end breast cancer. Click the link to gain more information and to donate to this great cause. Although Breast Cancer Awareness Month isn't until October, it's never too soon to lend your support. Do you want to be saved? Well, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come now confessing and believing that you raised Jesus from the dead. I repent of my sins and I ask you to come into my heart. I make you the Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you prayed that simple prayer, welcome to the family of God. We believe you got born again. What's next, you may ask? Keep God first in your life and get into a good Bible teaching church that will help you grow and develop in the things of God. Now remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. Well, I certainly pray that you enjoyed today's broadcast. And again, I would like to thank you for tuning in. Now remember, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives.